Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I am your host, Kevin, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Jen Miramontes. Did I pronounce that right, Miramontes? Yes, you did. Perfectly. Excellent. Thank you. Jen is the founder of Cancer Champions, a nonprofit dedicated to helping cancer survivors with fitness, nutrition, and mindset guidance, as well as a supportive online community. She's also leading the fitness component of a groundbreaking new program at Massachusetts General Hospital to benefit sickle cell disease patients. There's a lot more to say about everything that you do, but Jen, I'm just really glad I get to talk to you today and we get to talk about what you've been doing, what you've done, what you're going to do in the future. I'm just, I'm glad to chat with you today. So thanks for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. So let's, let's begin briefly, or actually however long you'd like, let's begin at the beginning, start at the start, you know, your, your superhero origin story, as it were. How did you get your start <laughs> as a, as a coach? How did you first maybe realize, and sometimes these moments are different. Sometimes they're the same. So I kind of ask it as a two-part question. How, when did you realize that you wanted to be some kind of coach in the industries that you were passionate about? Maybe you were told or discovered that you kind of had it in you, or you found the the whole name, the concept of coaching and were like, oh, that's, that's who I am. That's what I already do. I should do that. And how did you go from that like realization discovery process into the practice you have today, the coaching business you have today? Oh yeah, sure. It's a it's a quite a journey, so I'll try and keep it brief. Um, dating myself, I started actually in high school teaching aerobics classes, yep, aerobics. Mm -hmm. So doing the little eight count stuff, and <laughs> went off to college. And I was running track at the time, I was running four hundred, and I just I, I I found myself kind of longing for the getting in front of people and teaching again. And, and so then I started my own little, I'll put air quotes around it, corporate fitness. I was at Pepperdine, which is in Malibu, California. Mm, and um, so I drove into like kind of downtown LA, Beverly Hills area and would go to, to corporate offices with literally my boom box in a little bucket. And, and it was like, Hey, 10 bucks. If you want to, I'd go in the conference room and teach a fitness class there. <laughs> and, and I found it was really exciting and I loved it. But this is a long time ago and the fitness industry wasn't quite respected the same as it is now. It wasn't really a career path. It was kind of like, you know, Johnny, you know, at the gym and, you know, you think of back to the movie with Jamie Curtis that I can't think of off the top of my head where she taught aerobics and her little thong and yeah, when like John Travolta was in, I, I, the name escapes me, but I, I, can, I can remember the exact movie you're talking about. Very, very classic of the time. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so my career path became more marketing advertising, but I kept kind of coaching on the side because it's what I loved. So I did a lot of run coaching and didn't charge for it. Would just get together with friends on the weekend, help them train for marathons, et cetera. And it wasn't until the recession, well, probably just a little bit before, around 2005, I would say, that I just kind of realized I was not loving what I did. I wasn't, it wasn't exciting me anymore. And I kept gravitating toward the coaching thing. It just kept, it was kind of what I left. I was coaching my kids' soccer teams and was in a car with my sister one time. And she said, well, you know, what do you love about your job? And what do you not like about it? And answered those questions. And then she said, well, what do you, what do you really love? And I was like, I love coaching. And she said, well, well then why did you try and make that into a career? So I said to my husband, how would you feel if I quit my job? He said, it's not <laughs> because it did own me. And, and so the rest of is, is a little bit history from there. I, I started uh, my, my office was a field near my house. That's where I did the, my gym was there. My office was there. My office was the back of my car, eventually opened a studio, which grew into a bigger studio, which grew into an even bigger studio. <laughs> and so, and then got my way out of that and decided to enter more into the special populations world that I'm in now. Hmm. So that's a, that's a brief history down a lot of years. Uh, it covers a lot of time. I, I, I love that the, the idea of being a coach was with you from almost the beginning like in some way or another. And you kept trying to find different ways to express that. And then eventually you discover it's a, it's a lot like the way coaching works for people when they receive it is like, there's a, a moment of discovery where they finally get the language and the words to describe what they want to do. And they are able to then like figure out their intentions and they see a path forward with, with some guidance from a coach. And then they're able to move into it. I love how, um, how much a coach's origin story mirrors their coaching, where it's just this process of discovery and this, you know, asking of questions, usually simple questions. You, often, I love that you had a friend who was just like, what makes you, what are you doing right now? Do you like what you do? It's like, okay, what do you love to do? 
What is it that you love? And that's that simple question where it's like it's it's an easy one to dismiss, but when it when it comes from the right person at the right time, it is the perfect question. And I love how that just led so naturally into you to be like, you know what? That's right. I do love this. I'm gonna find a way to do this. And you had a partner who blessedly was just like on board. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Get out in the field, get in the back of the car, do what it takes to make it happen. And I don't I'm I'm always I'm always both impressed, not amazed, but not surprised anymore, but always very impressed with how how true the journey of a coach seems to be from where you start to where you where you come. It's it's very consistent with what coaches do and what the the effect that positive that the coaching can have in the in the world. I just it's it's easy for me to gush about it because I love it so much. And I get to talk to so many different kinds of coaches too. And it's it's that that does still kind of amaze me sometimes how there's the these common threads through every single kind of coach I talk to, whether it's, you know, coaching like CEOs to be better leaders in the, you know, in the C-suite or fitness coaches or relationship coaches or, you know, career coaches, career change, career growth, development. It's like, and sports coaches, even like across the whole spectrum, there's this commonality of, I found my passion and it's to serve and to share, you know? And, and in that in that way, that best expresses their their own passions and their own work. It's just... I don't really have a, a follow-up question there. I just, I love, I love hearing stories like yours and being like, there it is again, that, that common thread that makes me, that helps me love what I do. Like I, I get to talk to people like you about your stories. And it's just like, it's just, I'm consistently amazed, but never, never surprised anymore. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what your coaching practice and your and your and your business looks like today. I know you have you're involved in a number of, of very important uh, projects. So I think I'll just open it up to you and let you let you start where you'd like to start about what your what your coaching business looks like today and what you're what you're involved in and what you're working with. Yeah. So quite honestly, I, I joke that I have I own three businesses. So I I still do through the pandemic was able to keep a, a fraction of my clientele and actually trained them and turned my backyard into a gym to a degree and uh, did do like little mini spin classes back there. So they get their cardio and it was just a way for, I mean, there was a handful of people that just said, we really need you through the pandemic. Can we make this work? We're willing, we'll do whatever, you know, I had them washing their hands when they arrived and hand sanitizers at every station and six feet apart. And, you know, we, we worked it, we made it work. And so their, their loyalty to me was, was massive. And so I continued to work with them. And quite honestly, I could never stop. I just, the, ever so often people say, you're going to leave us. You're going to go to Boston full time. And I, I, I won't because they're, they're like family members to me and, and, you know, coaches out there, you are, I'm sure too realize that, you know, when you're on this fitness journey with somebody and you see the evolution of what happens to their mind and their body and just the emotional attachment that you, you, that happens just quite naturally, you can't just say, okay, well, I'm going to go now. I, I've got other things. So, so those people I'm very, I, I, I feel a, a strong allegiance to staying with them. So that is, I do have that part of that aspect of my business still. The Cancer Champions organization had, was something I started in 2010 without, it's a very long story. And I know we don't have a lot of time, but they, you, it's easy to go on the site and read it. But the, yeah. the, the essence of it is my mother who was super healthy, was diagnosed with stage four cancer, decided that she towards the end of her life wanted to hike in and out of the Grand Canyon, which is hmm. massive undertaking for somebody that's in chemo and, and, and not able to really eat. It was esophageal cancer. Hmm. And my my job as a trainer became understand cancer, understand the chemos, understand what's happening to her body and get her in and out of that Canyon. And she did it. And, and then pretty soon I was kind of the, you know, that woman, that trainer that works with cancer patients. And so people, and that's what happens in the fitness world, right? You, you be, you find your niche, you do it long enough and you start to find the things that you, you gravitate toward, or you really love. And I had already gotten my medical exercise specialty. So I've worked with, with disease, with like, with MS and Parkinson's. And so that was not uh, new to me, but so I worked a little bit with cancer, but learned a lot more. And then before I know it, I had built this practice up, but I could only, well, emotion between emotions and sorry about the dog, between emotions and also just the ability to how much hours, how many hours you have, I couldn't really help as many people as I wanted. 
And my dear friend who is a breast cancer survivor toward the end of her, like literally the last week of her life said to me, you have to figure out a way to serve more people with cancer. If you can just figure this out somehow, then you, I think that you're going to, you'll, you'll find it very gratifying and, and, and people with cancer need you. And so that happened. I, I started the cancer champions program and it's a nonprofit and we, get donations and those become grants for the, for people that couldn't necessarily under, afford it otherwise, but also you can, people, you know, can gift a membership to, to, to a loved one. I doubt there's anyone out there that doesn't know somebody either has been personally touched or doesn't know somebody that's been touched by cancer. Yeah. It's, you know, 40% of our population will have some form of cancer. So Huge. So that was, yeah. that was, uh, that, that kind of took me through where I am now. And then I don't know if you want me to head into the mass general, if you have a, a, any questions for me. Oh, well, I mean, well, it's, first of all, thank you for, for sharing that. I just, not really a question, but just a, just a, a comment pretty much in line with whatever you said about your, your journey and how I just, I love that you were able to turn that experience with those, with those loved ones in some cases with their direct encouragement into a way to give back and to serve and to help others as well. It's just, it's very, I mean, it's, it's, it's a word that gets thrown around pretty easily, but it is very inspiring and very moving. Like I have a, a definite warmth in my chest for that. I, I lost my dad to, to cancer a long time ago or to, to a version of cancer and some other stuff too, but that's neither here nor there. But it is, I love, I love the way that you were able to serve those in need and then use that service to then seek out a way to help, to try to help more people and just follow that path. It's just, it's very, I'm, I'm very grateful. So I'll, all I have to say really is thank you for that. But yeah, we can we can definitely move into your work at Mass General and you can talk about that because that's also very, very exciting, a very exciting way to to serve people as well. So please talk a little bit about that before we run out of time. It's already, the clock is ticking. So I <laughs> yeah, guess, please, please. I know, I'll be, uh, again, try to be brief. Um, and, and also thank you for saying that, you know, it is, it, it clearly, it isn't ne either, neither here or there for you. It is, you're an example of, you know, how many people are affected by cancer, which is a big part of why I do what I do. It, it impacts everyone. So the, the story behind the sickle cell disease work that I'm doing is a, the woman, her name was Anne Mary P Murray Page, and she was really the motivation behind my, be one of my best friend that had the breast cancer, the motivation behind Cancer Champions. Her sister, a nurse at Massachusetts General Hospital, reached out to me and she said, I work with sickle cell patients and there's nothing as far as fitness or nutrition out there for this group, this community. Hmm. Do you know anything? Is there anything that you could do? And, you know, I think many of us that are in this industry are, we have this, this need to serve. There's a reason that we do what we do. It's, and it's to, to, to help people feel better. And I the answer was no, I, I know of the disease. I don't know enough about it. So I, but certainly I can, I mean, I can do some mindset stuff. I'd be happy to support in, in some way, but I really, I'm probably not that person. Well, I went back and started researching and learning and understanding the disease and realized there's probably at, to this day, I don't know of anyone in the fitness world that works with sickle cell patients and the reality of either you, you learn and you step in and you do what you can, or, uh, or, or these people will continue to be underserved and ignored. It's a disease that primarily affects black people or people of color. And it's a disease, disease that if it affected white people probably would have been eradicated by now by gene therapy. Mm -hmm. hasn't happened. And so it was just something I couldn't turn my back on because I feel like this is a community of people that have had people turn their backs on them for way too long. So that, that put me into it. And I was like, I'll do everything I can, you know, within my knowledge base and, and then started to learn. This was a couple of years ago, learned, learned, started learning and reading and studying and talking a lot to Dr. Azar who runs the program. He, he's constantly teaching me and we've started a, we got, he got funding through to, into Mass General. He got a big grant from Vertex Pharmaceuticals. And part of that grant was writing in a position like mine. So we've, the changes that are happening with these patients are unbelievable. Like mm -hmm. let, way less visits to the ER, 
they're actually sleeping better, less anxiety. I mean, it's, 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 I, I didn't know that, that, that this could happen. You know, you know, by working in this world that, you know, you can make some, some pretty good changes in lives, but to be almost every single patient to have their lives completely altered by just having somebody do the work and kind of explain and teach and put the time into them, into the, the, you know, you can do this and we can mm -hmm. keep it safe has been it's been really amazing and i just am super proud to be a part of it's in a, this the group of people that i work with at massachusetts general hospital the sickle cell team that the best so <laughs> that kind of that brings you up to speed on where i am with my all the stuff all the balls in the air that just are yeah. fulfilling me completely i just i yeah and and again i'm just i'm so like it i literally i could feel like warmth in my chest and I, like i the way once you began talking about the, the work you were doing and the effects the positive change you were seeing like i this is audio only podcast so it's only i get to see it but your 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 demeanor already very warm to start with just like you just brightened up and like it was i it could feel it i mean i know we're just on zoom but i could like really i could literally feel it coming across coming through the wires how how needed this work is and how how grateful i'm sure everyone else is but how grateful you are to be able to be able to serve in that way and i just yeah i just i'm i'm so again i keep coming back to it i'm so grateful that there are people like you who are finding those places of the greatest need and just moving into them when the opportunity arises you know not being careful you know you you thought about it you're like i'm not sure i'm the right fit i just i love that caution because that's something another one of those common threads too that i find that good coaches are always concerned that they be the right fit for the person they're coaching, regardless of what the, what the nature of the coaching is. Fit is so important. You want to be the right person. You want to be the right coach for the, for that, for that person, for those people. And to have that consideration up front and then to, but to still move into it with hope and opportunity and to have it work out so far, so good, so well, and to be serving in this way. It's just, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, imp I'm impressed and inspired and grateful for what you're doing. And I could, it, I could see it on you. I can hear it in your voice. I can see it on your face. It's lovely. So once again, I, I lack a follow-up question other than gratitude. <laughs> oh, and thank you so much for allowing me to share the story. It's mm. really, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it makes me, it gets me excited. So yeah, of course. Of course. I, I don't know where else there is. Is there anything you want to like leave anybody with? Actually, you know what? I should say, if anybody wants to find out more, we'll have all the links to where everywhere you're at in the show notes, but go ahead and speak for a few moments on not only where people can, find out more about the work that you do and how you go about doing it and all these various aspects of your, of your, of your practice in your life, but also where people can maybe best connect with you. I don't know if you have a, a place where you're mo most easy to reach. Like if you're like LinkedIn DMS, or if you have a social media, like maybe you're very active on Instagram. I'm not, I forgot to check before we started talking, but is there any place where people can go to both find out more about you and also connect with you if they'd like to learn more or maybe even figure out how they could help? Absolutely. Probably the easiest way to connect with me would be via email and they can get that on either of my uh, sites. So the sickle cell is run through Jen M fit, uh, Jen Miramontes, Jen M fit.com. And then cancerchampions.org is more of the cancer focused work that I do. And so that's probably the easiest way I am on LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook, a little bit of TikTok. <laughs> I don't run my social media personally, but they're they're very very good about if, if somebody does DM me, they're really great about letting me know. So, uh, but and if you just want to kind of follow the just the journey through social media, it's there's Cancer Champions and Gen M Fit are both and in, in, in Instagram and Facebook. So and like you That's said, fun. you can you can share those the specific handles on on the, wherever it is you share them. Oh, yeah. Go get them in, get, get them in the show notes, put them in the, in the podcast show notes, get them everywhere. We can put them, put them up on the website and all that stuff. Once again, I, I have, I have no other notes to say except to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so pleased to get a chance to talk with you and that you got a chance to share a small fraction of your story and also about the work you're doing now and keep going, <laughs> just keep going. I'm, I'm, I love what you do. And I, I love, the opportunity to share a bit of that story and to be just a small part of, of this journey for you and for the people that you're helping. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you again for having me. It always makes me feel uh, special to, to get a chance to share the story. Good. And to the audience who are listening, reach out, find out more, find out ways that you could help if that, if you're so inclined and thank you for listening. Thank you for being here with us today. And we'll talk to you again soon.